Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I appreciate you signing in for Agent Essential Toolkit Training through Cindy Bishop Worldwide. Um, good morning. My name is Kelly Catalinas with Fairway Independent Mortgage. I'm a branch manager there, and I am your sponsor for today's webinar. Um, I really appreciate you tuning in today and would like to give a shout out to our instructor for the morning, who is Gary Garrison. Um, Gary is a real estate broker. Uh, he has over 30 years of technology experience and provides full IT system consulting services. Um, this combination of, the, of abilities has made him an invaluable member of Cindy's team. We really appreciate all of his coaching efforts for Cindy Bishop, and he is a huge resource to all fellow real estate agents. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Gary Garrison. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate the intro, and thank you for sponsoring today. Really appreciate it. So as Kelly said, my name is Gary Garrison. And uh, as you can see here, just briefly is a quick list of uh, my uh, real estate experience and IT consulting experience. I've been doing uh, or providing IT consulting services since the 80s. Uh, so it's been some time. And, uh, and I found that it's uh, not just been invaluable to me, uh, but I receive a lot of questions from other folks uh, and, and continue to receive those questions uh, from folks that have their own challenges once they find out what my background is. And, uh, and I've just come to realize that it really is a, a, a very important skill set uh, that not, every, not everybody has easy access to. And uh, so I'm happy to share the information that I have learned over the years uh, with my fellow agents, uh, kind of help their lives be a little bit easier. Uh, so with that today, we're going to we're going to talk about what I refer to as the essential toolkit for real estate agents. Uh, we're going to discuss critical business functions. We're going to identify key challenges uh, that today's agents uh, experience. Um, what I'll do is I will discuss uh, what I feel are the uh, important technology areas, and uh, we'll discuss essential technology tools. Uh, that fall into those different areas. And we'll even talk about just briefly at the end, uh, the fact that you may already have the solution in hand and may not actually realize it. So with that said, um, we'll start with the critical business functions. And, and most of this probably won't be, you know, a shock or surprise to any of you uh, that's in, uh, listening today. Uh, you need to have a contact database. You must be able to track your business tasks, your income and expenses, uh, especially this time of year is where we're preparing for tax season. Uh, you must be able to you know, market effectively. You need to be able to store and protect all of your real estate uh, related documents, uh, especially the sensitive documents uh, that have uh, really important and private information for your clients. Uh, it's really incumbent upon you to protect those and they're counting on you for that. Uh, email, drip mail, part of your kind of your outreach, uh, lead capture and transaction management. These are really, you know, what we would consider critical business functions for, for our real estate agent uh, industry. Some of the challenges that we face include accessibility. We need to make sure that our technology is accessible no matter what device it is that we're using, no matter where we are. Many agents work from a combination of locations, work from home and work from the office, and also we work on the road. We're very mobile. So accessibility, mobility um, are key. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, security, uh, being able to protect documents is going to be very important, uh, but security even goes to the next level and being able to protect your own devices as well. Uh, I know we've seen an uptick in recent years and the number of hacking um, events uh, that we've seen that, that impact everybody, not just major organizations. And then functionality is going to be another challenge for us. There are a lot of different applications out there, many of which have overlapping features. And we just want to make sure that what we're using makes sense and includes the functionality that we need. And oftentimes our functionality needs will change. And so we always need to be on the lookout for other types of applications and, and technology uh, pieces uh, that can help us overcome those challenges. 
So when I break down technology areas, this is essentially how I break them down. Uh, I refer to devices uh, separate. These would be your typical, your computer, your desktop or laptop. Uh, most agents today also have a tablet, so it's not just one or the other. Usually you'll have both, um, and your printer. Now, also too, you could add under devices uh, your mobile phone. Uh, a lot of the smartphones these days, now of which is pretty common, uh, especially if, within the real estate industry, would be another device for you that you would need to be able to uh, support. Hardware is going to be the types of physical, um, attachments that you would utilize to actually improve the quality of uh, your communications, the security of those communications, and even the uh, perhaps accessibility of those devices. Uh, so that's be a second category. And the third, which is what I think most folks refer to as uh, their software or applications. Um, you know, applications can refer to both desktop or laptop. Uh, I think more folks consider apps, when, you know, when you hear apps, they consider things for like their tablet or their phone. Um, and in software, they consider more for you know, the old standard, your desktop and laptop computers. So we'll start with the devices, uh, because this is a question that I get all of the time. It's, you know, how do I know if what I have is sufficient, uh, not just for today, but for the future. So a couple of things to keep in mind is that today's devices need to be powerful, they need to be responsive, and they need to be modern. And I only say modern simply because uh, today's computers can last 10 plus years quite easily. Unfortunately, operating systems change Hardware does have a shelf life. It's got what's known as an MTTF, a mean time to failure. So they, they simply degrade over time. So the older the systems are, the, the more likely they're not performing at the level that they could, or they certainly did originally. And the end result could be that you lose time uh, waiting on applications to load, waiting on your computers or your device to boot up, to even be accessible uh, to start with. And of course, if you're losing time and you're losing clients, you're definitely losing money. So what I tend to use as a, a basic barometer uh, when I receive these questions is, you know, I ask folks, if, you're, if your device is three years or older, um, you know, I certainly recommend that you have it checked just to make sure it meets your needs um, and, uh, and that it's optimized uh, as it should. Um, if it uh, is, three years or younger than three years, chances are you're going to be okay. But as you get close to that three year mark, you're gonna find that your, your system just won't be performing as it used to. And, uh, and that could be for a number of reasons, either it's just become outdated or it may just be that it needs some actual uh, TLC, some good old housekeeping to, to get it running optimal again. If it turns out that minimal improvement is needed, that would be great. Uh, typically that would mean optimizing the system, maybe improving the hardware, adding memory to it, something along those lines may be enough and cost effective enough for you to go ahead and do that. If the system is really in poor shape and really outdated, it's become outdated, then you'll definitely want to take a look at putting an, a, a replacement plan uh, in place to go ahead and update that system. Again, it's key because if you're losing time and you're losing clients because your device is slow, applications aren't responsive, it takes too long to switch between apps, you know, things like that, then you're definitely losing money. And at the end of the day, that's, we can't be losing money, you know, ourselves and our families are counting on us. So when we move from devices, I'm gonna jump into essential mobile tool software applications because I know that's kind of the fun stuff that folks uh, first wanna hear about. So we'll talk about this now before I move into some of the other hardware items. So as I mentioned before, there are lots of things you need to keep track of, including income and expenses, a couple of applications uh, that, that are pretty common within our industry and that do a great job for us, include Quicken and TaxBot great for any of our accounting services, as well as keeping track of mileage and expenses. For a database, a Realty Juggler Online Desk, 
two great applications. I'm a big proponent for Realty Juggler and we really provide Realty Juggler training through the Sydney Bishop Worldwide School um, because it is a, it's a great system. I've used it probably going on 10 years now myself. It's super inexpensive and yes, yet it has everything that you know I need and I find that most real estate agents need, including being a CRM, you know, include CRM functionality, which is your customer relationship management functionality. Um, includes a workflow and the ability to create customized workflow as well as transaction management, marketing, and all kinds of other things. Lion Desk is a very similar application. Uh, it's also a cloud-based service, just like Realty Juggler. Uh, it just provides those services a little bit differently and a little bit more of a cost, but both are great options. Evernote is a wonderful application for being able to keep track of um, a variety of notes or documents. Uh, you can take, you can capture audio, you can take and mark up photos, and you can share those quite easily. And it includes plugins for many different devices and many different applications. So you can do screen captures and web clippings and things like that off of your web browser, uh, for instance, on your computer. Uh, you can also do that off of your mobile phone or your tablet. Uh, you can be walking through and take audio notes, capture those to Evernote uh, from your phone as you're walking through a property. If you're going to do that with other people, definitely make sure you get their permission. Um, it's also a great tool uh, if you want to do just some simple markups on some photographs, if you're taking pictures for clients. And you need to be able to identify, for instance, width of a door frame or height of steps, things like that. You can draw arrows, make notes. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful application. Nowadays, uh, especially uh, within um, the real estate industry, I mean, we're, we've been mobile forever, uh, but now there are a lot of map applications that exist that are accessible from your, you know, from all your devices as well. I hear of what, been, uh, what have become uh, most recently the more popular uh, applications. Uh, you may use some or, or all of those. Uh, Google Maps, um, I think it's quite popular. Waze, maps.me, and here we go maps. Uh, they offer uh, convenient online GPS services as well as the ability to capture your routes offline which I, I always recommend if you, if you think that you're going to be traveling into an area where there's going to be little to no cell signal, then you'll want to do yourself a favor and definitely capture the routes offline before you make the trip. And then you find out that, well, your, your device isn't connecting to the internet. So you're, you're kind of lost and somehow you've got to connect with your client and find out how to meet them at the property. So having the ability to capture that information offline can definitely be a lifesaver and certainly save you some embarrassment. Um, Authentisign, DocuSign, and DotLoop, popular applications uh, for uh, our industry forms and for being able to do in-person and remote electronic signatures. They definitely have sped up the process over the years. And each of those systems, they're, they're not identical, but they're similar. So each have their pros and cons, but every one of them have made improvements over the years um, that have benefited the real estate industry. If you are a Macintosh user or an app, app, Apple user or a Microsoft user, a um, couple presentation software packages uh, of note are Keynote and PowerPoint, Keynote being an Apple uh, product and PowerPoint being for Microsoft uh, Windows systems. For our next grouping, we'll take a look at HomeSnap. Uh, HomeSnap Pro, which is recently updated, has added some additional capabilities, which if you have not looked into, you really ought to, uh, but it, because it includes some new features and improved features for doing farming um, as well for you know, certain areas that you wanna be able to grow your business. Um, but it's also a great contact tool, uh, provides you access, to, convenient access to listing information, uh, allows you to do rapid CMAs as well. Uh, and it also includes safety features for being able to identify when you're starting your uh, viewing and when you're stopping your viewing and being able to alert folks if you don't check in when you're supposed to. Uh, so, you know, safety being, you know, certainly something that we all need to be sensitive to. 
it's a, it's great to have that feature within that that application. For doing open houses, I know some folks still do open houses the old fashioned way, uh, being pen and paper. Uh, I got away from that years ago because I found, uh, for whatever reason, uh, people seem to be allergic uh, to picking up a pen and writing their name down. And more often than not, if they were going to, it would be so illegible um, that uh, you'd never be able to read the information anyways, be able to properly follow up with them. And, uh, and, and most of the time, I'd be scratching my head wondering if that was deliberate and, and assuming it was. However, I have found over the years that folks love technology. So, you know, putting a little tablet and a Bluetooth keyboard, for instance, in front of them, you know, and have them type in their information and click a couple of boxes that says they are working with an agent or not. All of that is a lot, has been a lot easier to do and has proven to be a lot more fruitful. And here are some great applications for, uh, for that. Open Home Pro, AM Open House, and Open House Manager are, are three real popular applications. Uh, they can assist with your marketing of your open house, capturing you know, those visitors that come through, and can even include auto email. So when your open house is over, for those folks that have signed in and provided a, an email address, these systems can automatically send out a thank you for attending email. Um, just kind of help, again, save some extra steps for, for you and the process, and at the same time improve uh, the, the information that you're able to capture during your open houses. RPR to Realtor Property Resource and Remind are two great applications um, you can use together uh, to be able to help uh, determine property values. You can pull up property history uh, information. Uh, you can use it to identify comps and you can also capture information to really help with your farming uh, specific areas too. So great applications for that purpose that are available to real estate agents. Centric key, showing note and showing time. Centric key has become uh, the, the all important application for the central lock. Um, lock boxes, uh, they are getting away from the, the physical key cards themselves in favor of everybody relying on the Sentry Key application. So if you're not currently using it uh, and, and or if you find yourself in a position where uh, perhaps your device, your phone uh, has an operating system that's too old uh, to support the current version of the Sentry Key app, uh, you'll definitely need to, in the very near future, because I think it's the end of February, you know, you'll definitely need to make sure you're able to get access to that app and have that app with you uh, to be able to access the central lock boxes. Showing note and showing time uh, are, are applications provided by the same company. Showing time is integrated with our MLS in this area, which is great. Uh, showing note is a, a cool application of theirs that allows you to share with your clients, basically your tour that you've scheduled and allows them to capture and share the notes that they make for each of those properties. Um, so neat applications to consider. For those that are interested in video uh, and creating videos either of their properties or of themselves, you know, regardless of the device that they use, Viva Video, Vimeo, and WeVideo are three popular products uh, that do great for that. Uh, for those of you that work with clients that are out of the area um, and or, you know, especially if you're trying to show properties, got to get permission first ahead of time if you're going to do these, but, you know, Skype, FaceTime, WhatsApp, and Viber are great applications for being able to text, call, and even do video, uh, video calls with your clients, uh, regardless of where they are in the world. So very handy. And in this, this last entry here, uh, for those that go kind of above and beyond, or you know, this is part of your, your specific service, uh, Stanley Floor Plan and Stanley Smart Measure Pro, which is a, both a hardware and an application, are two great applications if you have the need or the desire to create floor plans uh, for your listings. Uh, whether they're residential, commercial, whatever the need is, uh, Stanley Floor Plan has got applications that work on multiple devices that are great mostly for manually creating floor plans. 
Uh, the Stanley uh, Smart Measure Pro is pretty cool. It actually will take measurements of the rooms because uh, it's a combination of hardware and application. Uh, actually take measurements of the rooms and as you go through the property, will help piece together a floor plan for you. So pretty neat applications. Uh, I, I'm sure there's gonna be something in there that maybe you haven't heard of or had thought about but hadn't looked into uh, that this will hopefully kind of spur that on and uh, maybe you'll go ahead and take a look at these. Uh, great applications uh, for really helping address most of the most of our needs in this uh, in this real estate industry. So, uh, what I want to talk about now are some of the essential mobile tools that we need. From uh, this is going to be specifically for hardware that really enables the devices with the applications to work in the long run. Um, so these are your, you know, what you consider behind the scenes type pieces that you're going to find essential depending on what your needs are. So a broadband adapter uh, provides connection to your cellular service provider. Um, for some devices, it can attach directly to that. If uh, others may be able to simply work off of your, um, you can do a wireless network essentially off your device, off your cell phone. And you know, if you do that, uh, then they can connect that way. Uh, but if you don't have that ability, uh, then you can use a broadband adapter to connect to your cellular service provider to be able to utilize their network for you to be able to access the internet using those devices. Wide Wi-Fi range extenders are essential, I think, uh, despite what most of the advertisers claim about the amount of coverage area that their routers support. Um, I find that in most homes and offices, the Wi-Fi signal just isn't strong enough to reach most areas. And so these Wi-Fi range extenders are wonderful. Uh, many of them are small devices that can plug into a wall. And essentially what you do is you, you, you plug them in and activate them towards the end of where the Wi-Fi signal strength is, but not right at the absolute end. And then essentially they'll create then their own signal, which will go beyond the current limitation and allow your devices to connect. Your devices would actually connect with the extender and that extender would then connect and communicate through the router for your device. So if you find that you, you know, are not getting a strong enough signal in your office, and remember offices are a big problem because of all the metal and all the electrical uh, running through the walls and ceilings. So they're, they're notoriously uh, bad areas to, for, for Wi-Fi signals to exist. So if you find yourself with weak Wi-Fi signals in the office or even a weak Wi-Fi signal to different places in your home, uh, I'd consider getting a Wi-Fi range extender to take, take a look at those. I even had an agent contact me because they had a vacation property uh, that they use once in a while. And because they don't live there very often, the neighbor was kind enough to allow them to piggyback off of their network. Uh, but there was only one wall in the home that they could do that because the signal wasn't strong enough. And as soon as they learned about Wi-Fi range extenders from me, they, they were tickled to come back and let me know that they could now use that Wi-Fi network anywhere in the house. So uh, I certainly don't recommend that um, outside of, you know, as long as you've got permission. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the Wi-Fi range extenders can be used to solve a number of uh, connection problems. Uh, for cell phone signal boosters, uh, these are hardware devices. Oftentimes, uh, you'll find that they'll be um, uh, something you can install in the office and or something in your car. But if you do find you tend to travel in areas where you get little to no cell phone signal at all, uh, and you do that quite regularly, then it may be worth investing in a signal booster. Um, you can even get one for the home. Uh, I know a lot of folks that work out in remote areas because they like the they like nature and the peace and quiet. But unfortunately, the, the towers aren't close enough to really do them well. Uh, so they actually have signal boosters that they can install in the yard, directional antennas that can actually help boost and improve those communications. So, uh, you know, great options. Even can install in your car as well as at the office. So great options if for those areas. But cell phone signals just aren't strong enough to, to be beneficial. 
And then for power, it's not uncommon for all of these different applications and, and capabilities that we have on our laptops and on our phones and tablets to drain our battery power quicker than we would like. And there's nothing more frustrating than to be out on a showing or being at a client house and you, know, you forgot to charge you know, the, the device uh, previous to that, and all of a sudden you've run out of power. Thankfully, they've got portable chargers um, available for both your mobile phones as well as your laptops. Uh, so if you do find that that's something that uh, you do experience and you just want to have something as a plan B just in case, they're not terribly expensive. I'd take a look at the you know, power bank portable charger for a mobile phone or a portable laptop charger. Typically, these are devices that you'll pre-charge, so they'll carry a charge with them, and then when you can plug them into those devices, they'll just, off, they'll just share their charge with that, that device. You can keep from losing your mobile phone or your laptop when you need them most. Okay, other things that are critical. Um, I, I talked about uh, security or protecting your client's information uh, early on. Um, uh, one other aspect of that is what happens if a hard drive dies? You know, not, especially the older the machines get, or even the fact that they're mobile, it's, it's not uncommon for a laptop or a tablet or even a phone to get dropped. And if it gets dropped, I mean, the hardware could potentially be damaged uh, you know, and fail on us. So what happens, you know, what do we do then besides just break down and cry because we've lost everything? Um, so, you know, one alternative is to utilize online backup services. Uh, I included a link here from PC Mag, uh, and I know they do one, I think it's every year they'll, they'll do this, um, but they're, you know, they, they go through and try to rate the best online backup services. And uh, I recommend that you, you consider this as an alternative to a standalone uh, backup drive, uh, which you could certainly do. Uh, but then you have the same question, what happens if that drive fails? Um, so I consider an online backup service uh, for sure, and that link should be helpful with that. Additionally, we need to protect our data from criminals, and we can do that with real-time antivirus, anti-malware, and intrusion detection software. Many of our computers and devices come with some sort of protection already. Uh, whether or not it's configured the way you need it to, or it does everything you need it to do, um, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's not something you're gonna know right off the bat without looking into it further. A uh, Couple options, I recommend IOBit Malware Fighter. IOBit actually creates a number of different applications that I've been impressed with. Uh, they're, they're very ineffective, uh, they're very, I'm not ineffective, uh, they're very, um, cheap, I guess, they're the cost effective uh, solutions that have been very effective in managing my computers and, and uh, clients' computers and, uh, and devices uh, over the years. Uh, and also, if you use Microsoft, uh, Microsoft comes with Windows Firewall, and, uh, and you can certainly use those to overlap with each other uh, to make sure your system's extra protected. And there are other applications uh, out there as well uh, that tend to come with um, your systems. It's just a matter of making sure they're doing what you want them to do and uh, that they remain up to date because the key is, is that new viruses, uh, new malware is created on a daily basis. You wanna make sure that whatever application or applications you're running are up to date as well as, as effective for what you need. Okay, and then with respect, you know, to security, we need to make sure that our clients data and files are protected from unauthorized access. So say folks do get access to your computer, whether it be remotely or, you know, heaven forbid your computer be stolen, uh, which unfortunately I've had happen to me out of the back of my car uh, while I was had stepped into uh, the actual the tax office, as a matter of fact. Um, so you need to make sure that if they are able to gain access to your computer and to your files, that no matter what your sensitive files, in particular your client's data and files, um, cannot be accessed easily at all. Uh, you can certainly use a number of different items to encrypt the information uh, and also to add additional password protection options. Um, 
couple of things to look at, uh, applications to consider would be IOBit protected folder, uh, would be one additional way of adding another layer of security to uh, the folders on your, on your hard drives and the, uh, the files inside those, as well as folder lock. And there are plenty of other applications out there. By all means, find something that works for you if one of those don't. But those are two very popular applications that do well uh, for folks. And then our communications, especially on public networks, uh, is very vulnerable. I know many folks always ask the question, you know, what are the real like? What's the real likelihood that my computer is going to be hacked? You know, the 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 short time that I'm here at, uh, you know, whatever the location is, most of the restaurants are now offering free Wi-Fi. So while I'm here at Panera meeting with clients, you know, what are the chances are I'm going to be hacked? Unfortunately, the, no matter how small the chance is the fact that there is a chance should definitely make you concerned um, about your communications and really um, want to do what you can to protect those. Uh, NordVPN, Surfshark, ProtonVPN, and others, but those three um, in recent, uh, recently have been the three most popular VPN applications available. Uh, these applications do require a fee to use them but they are great for actually encrypting your communication especially across public networks so that's going to be key any type of communication you want going out encrypted that just makes it that much harder and then believe it or not most of the hackers are lazy so they are looking for that low hanging fruit so they're looking for unencrypted communications. Um, they're looking for easily viewable red files that include, you know, what we call, you know, PII. It's, you know, it's, um, it's uh, protective, it's private information. So you're looking for your names, date of birth, social security numbers, email addresses, credit card information. If they can easily get access to that, the chances are greater, they'll, they will. Uh, so if you can encrypt it, you're going to make it much more difficult for them. And in chance they're pretty good, they're going to move on to somebody else. Um, also, too, we do an awful lot with paper, even though as an IT consultant for many years, I tried to work with the federal government on their whole paper, paperless initiative. Um, you'd be surprised at how much paper is still involved. And unfortunately, paper still is a very vulnerable uh, medium to use. Uh, it's something that can be easily picked up. Granted, they've got to be in person, but if you leave it on your seat in your car, on your desk at your office, um, or in your bag, your computer bag, and it can, you know, somebody can, can grab the files or steal your bag, etc. that information now is in, in the hands of criminals. And so I always recommend to folks, go ahead and convert those to electronic form, most of the offices these days and the, and the scanners have the ability to scan the PDF uh, form, uh, have those come to you and then put them in a secured folder and then go ahead and shred the paper copies. Uh, what's also nice, although we do have uh, in our area a three-year obligation to maintain the, con the documents that we use for our transactions, the, the electronic systems that I talked about earlier, uh, Authentisign, DocuSign, and .loop are great because they take care of that for us. I always encourage folks, use those as your electronic folder for those transaction-related documents. They're cloud-based. They've got the requirement to protect them and everything else, and you can actually take some of that weight off of your shoulders in the process. So protect the files by converting them to electronic form, secure them, and then, and then of course, shred the paper. Uh, don't, keep, don't keep those things any longer in filing cabinets in your home or office. Uh, that's a safety hazard anyways, um, major fire hazard, but uh, also to, um, you, don't, you don't want the, the risk responsibility for it. Now, we've talked a lot about being mobile and certainly the question is, is simply being mobile enough? So with the applications and their abilities, if the fact that they allow me to be mobile, is that 
you know, sufficient to meet my needs. So, um, you know, when, when you look at that question, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, no, actually, because in order for me to be an efficient business, you know, my systems and applications and processes really need to be integrated. So I can use fewer systems and actually be more productive. So for instance, for leads, are they automatically captured into your prospects database? Is there an autoresponder set up? Um, and do you automatically add those leads to a drip mail campaign? Uh, these are all things that, you know, can be done in an automated fashion to help, you know, eliminate, keep leads from slipping through the cracks, keep you from losing potential business, and, and also take some of the time off your plate if you can set these up in advance. Also, too, with tasks, do you have predefined workflows? Um, you know, is it integrated with your, your mail program, integrated with calendar, integrated with map, you know, uh, map capabilities? So we do want to make sure that, you know, our applications as best as possible are integrated as well. And of course, for our documents, are we able to access our documents from multiple devices, multiple locations, and secure them? all at the same time. So the quick answer is simply being mobile enough is no, really need to make sure that when we're evaluating functionality, which was one of the key issues identified earlier, that, that we're looking at things such as integration as well. All right, so with that said, and I mentioned that we do teach um, and provide coaching on Realty Juggler with Cindy Bishop Worldwide. This is just a quick screenshot of the Realty Juggler features, and you can always cycle back through to the video and look at it, so I won't spend a lot of time here, but you'll see, you know, consistently throughout, it's going to be a lot of capabilities that, uh, of, that you'll utilize yourself but what's also important to note too is that they have the ability to capture leads automatically into the system and they integrate with other sites and services. Uh, one of the things that they, they integrate with, which is super helpful, is MailChimp. Uh, MailChimp is a, a great service for your newsletters and other types of things. There are a lot more than newsletters. But I think I find in the real estate industry, we, we predominantly use them for, for newsletter services. And you can see they have forever free pricing. So you can utilize their service for up to 10,000 emails a month and up to 2,000 subscribers for free. And then once your needs exceed that, then they've got you know, pay subscription options available that aren't, aren't too expensive. Uh, but you can see that you can, you can utilize the service a long time. It integrates very nicely with Realty Juggler. So again, we're looking at two systems that happen to be cloud-based systems accessible on, on all of our devices that also integrate well with each other to help make life a lot easier for us. So that's why they're both being presented here. For more information regarding MailChimp and their pricing, um, you can utilize that link there that I have on that slide. For Realty Juggler, it's nice to know that it, it comes with a 90-day free trial. Uh, but if you use the link or the code that I've got in the next set below, you can actually get an additional two months free with your paid subscription. It's $179 per year. And then once you've actually subscribed, even if their rates go up, your rate won't. So your rate will be firm. And I think you'll find that that's, that's the lowest in the industry, certainly the lowest that I'm aware of, of comparable systems. And, uh, and it will do everything that you want to do. Now, if you do work with a brokerage that provides a CRM for you and some other applications, that is wonderful. You know, those are certainly incentives to attract agents. Um, I would, though, invite you to take a look at Realty Juggler and perhaps other options as well, simply with the eye toward protecting your information and, of course, for you being able to be free to move companies in the event that you need to. Not that you will, but coming from the IT, you know, professional field, you know, I learned early on that, you know, folks leave companies for many different reasons and it, and it doesn't always have to do with anything with the company itself. Maybe they've moved to a different area, maybe their needs have changed with themselves or their family. So I, I don't ever hold out that, you know, somebody's gonna join one company and stay there forever. 
when you change though, then the, the issue is, is okay, how, what do I do with my data? Especially if my data is in somebody else's system. So I've always been, uh, been a proponent for agents being independent, keeping their data independent as best as possible. It makes life a lot easier, especially if you do find you have to change brokerages for whatever reason or choose to. And it also keeps the control of your database in your hands, not in your, your uh, brokerage's hands. Um, so something to think about, definitely recommend taking a look at it if that's something of interest to you and there's the information for that. I also mentioned Evernote, so just real quick, this is just a, a quick screenshot of some of the features of Ever Evernote. Uh, another application I'd mentioned earlier that you can access from any devices, great for taking notes, sharing notes, taking pictures, taking audio clips, doing searches. I mean, it's all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. So if you're curious about Evernote, they too have a free version and then, uh, which is actually pretty, uh, pretty good. Good. Um, and at the end of the day, if you find that eventually your needs exceed what the free version offers you, then for, you know, for nominal fees, uh, they too have subscription programs available. And then, you know, believe it or not, you may already have the solution uh, to what you're looking for. Um, most folks don't tend to really fully learn all of the capabilities that the systems that they're subscribed to or applications that they have installed, uh, all the things that they can do. So for instance, uh, Instanet, which is part of AuthentiSign, uh, has email capability as well as fax and workflow capabilities in addition to their forms library and document management. Uh, also too, dot loop has fax capabilities as well. Um, so just, you know, believe it or not, if you have some of these other needs, these you know, systems are just examples uh, of what may be out there already that you may not, may, may prevent you from having to go look for a solution somewhere else. Uh, mirroring your iPad or tablet device, uh, oftentimes, especially for us mobile agents, if I'm pulling up information on my tablet, uh, you know, and I've got two or three, uh, you know, my clients around me, a group or two or three or so, it's hard to get everybody looking over my shoulder, even to put the tablet in the center of a table for everybody to get the same viewpoint of a tablet, um, be able to see exactly what it is I'm showing them. There is actually capabilities out there, software that you can, you can actually have uh, installed on the network, say at your office, where you can actually mirror your tablet screen to a monitor. So it makes it a lot easier for me able to still use that same device that I having to switch over to a different device and be able to still share that information with your clients. Also too, you can print or scan to your phone, uh, tablets in this case, or a laptop. Uh, many of the printers and scanners out there actually have the ability to do this already. Most of the time, it's going to require some additional effort on your part. But again, it's just a matter of convenience. If you're already using these other devices, you know, rather than having to transfer it from one to the other in order to be able to do this, a uh, couple extra steps at the beginning, and you might be able to go ahead and just take care of it from those devices from that point forward. Also, mirroring your phone to a monitor. Uh, many of the, actually the Samsung devices, I think were kind of the first ones to really push this. They have a Samsung phone, a Samsung monitor or TV. Uh, using their proprietary communication, you can actually sync what's on your phone to the monitor display. Uh, you can do this. This is great for doing this. Again, sharing information from a smaller device to a larger screen for your clients to see. It is also fun to use this to mess with people. I'm just saying. Um, and then voice commands, uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, we find that we're going to be driving or we're busy doing something else, but we need to do some other things as well. Uh, there are an awful lot of capabilities now where we can actually speak the commands and actually get our devices to do what we need to do, including our laptops. So we can do dictation, have them open up files open up applications, make phone calls, et cetera. Uh, so if you're not using those already, uh, do know that they're there. Uh, in most cases, especially for your phones, many of them already come with those. You just have to enact them or enable them uh, manually 
but just know that they're there and definitely take a look at those and see if there's something that could work for you. Okay, it's a lot of information. I tried to cover what I consider to be the main areas for technology. Certainly the main areas I tend to get a lot of questions for. Thank you very much for attending uh, this webinar, uh, for listening in. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help answer them. Uh, if not, um, I certainly appreciate it. Know that you can find out more information about Cindy Bishop Worldwide and the different webinars and classes off the Cindy Bishop Worldwide website. And then also remember, technology is your friend. Uh, it may not always feel that way, but I joke with people all the time as a technologist myself. I do love technology. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, with a little bit of love and a little bit of patience, uh, you'll find it can be your friend as well. If there are no questions, then that's, that's, I'm good, Cindy. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we're signing off. Thanks, Kelly. And uh, Thank we, you. And Kelly will be sending you the link uh, so you can have this available to you when you need it. Have a super day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you, everyone.